Okay, in this video, we'll try to understand what Splunk REST API is. Okay, now before we, we try to understand what is Splunk REST API, let me give you a fair idea, a very basic idea about what REST API is. Okay, then we'll try to see how how Splunk has implemented that part. Okay, so if I for that, I just created this this mind map. I'll just first try to expand this REST API part okay so REST API we can think of it as a program where by which basically two different softwares communicate with each other okay so you can think about it's a it's a function you just call that particular function with some kind of inputs and it will give you some outputs okay now now REST API is similar similar kind of concept it's an API for a website or some 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 software system it's a code that allows two software programs to communicate with each other. Now it uses HTTP protocol and it also supports get, put, post and delete of the data. Okay, this 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 operations it supports. Now REST API is built upon representational state transfer technology. Okay, it's an architectural style and approach mainly used for web service development. Okay, and um, and it also leverages less bandwidth. Now, if I, if I just talk more about this REST technology, okay. So th this particular video is not to uh, it not not intended to go very deeper into the REST API technologies. That's why I will just give you a very brief idea about what it is. So if we just talk some of the features about this. REST technology, we can see like the data storage and the access me mechanism between the client and server is separated. Okay, now it's a stateless one. That means when it w there is no concept of session over here, so client supply all the information needed for the server request. Okay, without relying on the stored state of the server. Okay, so that's why it is called stateless one. So whenever you are calling that API, you have to call with all the required parameters again, and based on that, it will be it will be replying. Okay, now it can have a optional data caching to improve the request response performance, and it has a very uniform interface for simplicity, and all of its architectural components are arranged hierarchically okay that means when a child nodes are discoverable by a parent nodes a and certain and contain their scope of information without reference to other nodes so this is just some of the basic properties of of rest technology now by understanding that okay we will just move to the splunk rest api how how splunk has been implemented that one okay now if i just talk about in terms of Splunk, what is REST API is so whatever we can do in Splunk, okay, functionality wise through Splunk software or Splunk web, everything can be achievable using a REST API. And in fact, the Splunk web, whatever op whatever operations we do, right, they internally use some kind of REST API as well, okay. And if I just talk about API functions broadly, they can be subdivided into running the searches, okay, and then manage objects and configurations mostly, okay. So manage objects and configurations means we have like jobs, input, save search, alerts, any information related to them or any update. If you want to do, if you want to update any save search or if you want to run any save search or gather information about the safe search everything you can do using a, using a rest api call okay now it also conforms to this rest architectural style which we have we, which we have just discussed over here okay and and for for a rest api to work successfully right we we need an endpoint basically it's endpoint is nothing but an url which we will be hitting by by passing it some parameters some required parameters for that api to work okay so that url is called the endpoint it means splunk in splunk for, for whatever objects or searches we have right each and every object have their own endpoints we'll see in very deep detail about like how how to access those different apis and what what are those api endpoint names okay in later videos we will see that one and 
if i just talk about the access method those those access method generally splunk supports get post and delete okay so get means if you if you want to get the current state of a particular resource or a list you want to list the child list list the child resources you can use the get method similarly for post you you can have the create and update resource okay including the enabling and disabling the resource functionality as well delete means the delete resource so if you see by through post itself you can you can basically have the create and update functionality both okay now by saying that i also wanted to say that not all rest endpoint supports all of these functionalities okay so for that we need to see the splunk documentation about what are the access methods that support okay we'll see in future like uh, when we'll discuss more about all these different endpoints we'll see what are the different actions they support okay now in terms of data transfer formats so splunk supports in xml json csv json calls json rows and raw format as well okay we'll see these things as well in future videos now in terms of authentication basically when you want to use a particular rest endpoint you have to have a authentication method for that okay so splunk supports that normal username and password wise even from splunk version 7.3 onwards it supports splunk authentication token as well okay and there are it also supports basic http authentication like tokenized authentication as well but this one is the newly implemented by splunk that splunk authentication token maybe if, if if possible i will try to demonstrate this one as well okay and not only you have you have to have a credentials with you to access an api you have to have you have to have authorization as well to access an api so in splunk if you see everything is maintained by a role right so to run a rest api as well you need to have a corresponding role enabled for you okay so generally admin user have the capability of assigning that role to you so so that that thing needs to be there before before you can access any particular endpoint okay now in splunk rest endpoints so there are certain concept called namespace namespace which is very important over here so let us discuss that one now in splunk if you see like the resources that affect the search activities have a have a uh, context of app and user right so even even if you see all the splunk um, configurations file since works like that only everything like even if you create a save search or any any kind of op we, we set a permission right either it's a app level or private or it's a global right so similar kind of concept exist in in rest api endpoints as well okay so now the most most of the rest api url if you see it will start with services ns okay and if you want to use you know, if you want to basically force the user and app namespace to it you have to use basically services ns now there are rest endpoints which which starts with services as well okay so but services ns are mostly used when we want to force the user and app context over there now if you see most of the splunk rest endpoints will have this kind of format where we have the https then the host the port name the management port basically over here then services ns then the user context if you see maybe you have seen it like admin then the app context slash search so this is how the whole endpoint has been built okay now for shared application suppose if you have some resources which is shared by app, app level you can use the nobody for the user node so that means it will the the endpoint name will be services ns slash nobody slash app like that okay and now if you want to mint for global access that means for all apps and all resource all users then you can use dash in the after services and is for user and app so this is how you need to use or build basically the rest endpoint urls based on our need or what you want to refer basically okay and and as i said like we can also access resources by services node as well 
Now there are certain resources like indexing, data input or similar kind of deployment activities. It does not have any user and app context. Even those endpoints you can, those resources endpoints also available under services in assessment. We'll see in, in future how to, how to achieve those stuff as well. And we'll also try to see how we can create our own REST endpoint in Splunk so that it will work like just like out of the box endpoints as well to achieve a lot of stuff so that we will have a very much control over what we want to do in Splunk. Okay. See you in next video.